Welcome to The Standard. Coming to you from Vancouver, I am Randall Mark. Tonight, a self-help guru reveals the secret. Dr. John Demartini is an international speaker and business consultant. The author of numerous books, his most recent is entitled The Heart of Love, How to Go Beyond Fantasy to Find True Relationship Fulfillment. Another book he's written that I'm going to chat with him about maybe he has the most unique title I've ever seen, How to Make One Hell of a Profit and Still Get to Heaven. In addition, Dr. Demartini appeared in what has become a movie phenomena, the film The Secret. Here's a clip. Known in the healing arts of a placebo effect. A placebo is something that supposedly has no impact and no effect on the body, like a sugar pill or something. You tell the patient that this is just as effective. And what happens is the placebo has the same effect, if not greater effect, than sometimes the medication is supposed to be designed for that effect. So they found out that the human mind is the biggest factor in the healing arts, uh, more so than sometimes the medication. That was a clip from Dr. John Demartini in the film The Secret. Dr. Demartini is with me now. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Great. Uh, I, the, the film The Secret is a phenomenon. It's, kind of, it's a wave that's been sweeping across North America and around the world. It, it seems to focus on what I uh, understand is this idea of the law of attraction. This idea that I can speak positive energy into the universe in one sense. And if I just think thoughts of, I need a new car, I want a better parking spot, I want a, you know, more money, that that reality will somehow come to be. Explain that to me. That seems a bit odd. Well, I think that that... Um I think you have to be really grounded in reality here. Um, the secret definitely is based on the understanding that what we think about, we tend to bring about. If, if what, we have a hierarchy of values in our lives, and whatever's highest on our value is where our discipline, reliability, our focus, and our attention is, what we inspire about. Whatever's lowest on our value, where we procrastinate, hesitate, frustrate, and have inertia about. So whatever is highest in our values, if we walk in a mall, we'll see those things that support the highest values. We'll see them, we'll act upon them, we'll make decisions. And so we are literally attentive to the things that we really are focused on, what's really okay. important to us. Yeah. So it's when we concentrate our thoughts on something, if it's aligned with our values, we increase the probability of not only seeing the opportunities, acting on the opportunities, and then making decisions and acting and making it happen. So, yeah, I mean, I got a, the other day, I got a, a couple months back, I got a new Volvo. And then all of a sudden, I'm seeing Volvos all over the place. I never saw them before. Is that kind of what you're saying? You're just, all you're doing is uh, becoming aware of something you didn't know was there already? Well, there's a combination. I think that there's a, a combination of that it, you become aware. When you concentrate on something, you become more aware of it. That's one. Right. But you also, because you're concentrating on it, you're, you're seeing things and you're resonating. I've asked people by the thousands how many times they've, they've gone to pick up the telephone to call somebody, and lo and behold, the person's on the telephone. Right. I mean, we're talking about 99% of the population in 60 countries I've asked that. So that means it's pretty consistent across the world. But, but are you then saying there's some kind of mystical energy in the universe that, uh, that, is, that is reacting to my thoughts that caused the person to call me? Well, I don't know. I mean, the question is, is, did you think of them and did they pick up on it? Did they think of you? Did you pick up on it? Or is there something higher than that that's sending a message to both to see who's on an ego trip? I don't know the answer. Or did I just, we, did I go out with pizza with them last night and thought, hey, I should probably, and they were thinking, we both have the same kind of time at 10 o'clock in the morning where yeah, in think, some downtime. I, I think there's a higher synchronicity in the universe. Okay. And I do believe it's also based on our intention. And I do believe that we are, become more aware and we tend to act on it. But there's also a, a, a possibility in quantum theory that there's an entanglement relationship that we have with people that we think about. We've, we've known in history yeah. that people that have a great love for each other, couples or children and parents, they're connected. Twins, very commonly connected. There's some sort of a a non-local entangled field. I mean, that's the language we use in quantum physics, yeah. but it, it may be something more than that. But we definitely have a relationship to that, and our thoughts definitely impact things. I impact external forces outside of my own body, that my thoughts, you're saying, has an impact? I think it impacts the probability of events, because, uh, you know, I've, I've been sitting and writing goals now for 35 years, and I write them down, and I write down things that I'm inspired by that I would love to manifest. And I have a book that's about 600 pages. It's filled with the things that I've said and I've written. They're all coming true. I mean, it's amazing. The ratio of those is beyond a, just a probability. Now, part of that is because I'm thinking about it, and right. I'm seeing action, I'm taking actions, I'm doing things. Right. But there's also synchronicities because I wrote down the names of 50 people I would love to meet, celebrities mm -hmm. that I'd want to meet. You know, from Arnold Schwarzenegger to Julia Roberts. Larry King. Larry King. You said that. Okay. 
And, and what happens is I wrote those people down. And invariably, I ended up sitting in first class, and there all of a sudden I'm sitting next to him. Or I end up in a restaurant, and Julie Roberts, we had uh, sushi together. Mm. Uh, oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger at the Republican convention. Mm. Somehow, there was a synchronicity, and I well, ran I mean, into these people. You, you are traveling in those circles. If I did that, I'd never meet any of those people. But, but I wasn't traveling in the circles in those. I just happened to be visiting California, and Sylvester Stallone pulled up on a street corner. But, but you also maybe, I mean, maybe this possibility, you're also maybe il you know, eating in a restaurant that you can afford, that they can afford, unlike, let's say, a Sudanese kid who dreams of eating with, you know... Well, you know, I, 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 would, I would differ on that, because when I was actually met uh, Julia... It was actually at a sushi restaurant, just an ordinary sushi restaurant. She just happened to go mm -hmm. there. Uh, Sylvester Sloan just happened to pull up at a street corner. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger just happened to be at the Republican convention, and I just got asked and invited to go to this thing. There was, it was, there was a synchronicity in there. All I know is that I've met 600 and something different people that are leaders in the world somehow, and I wrote their names down. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's higher than just a random thing, I believe. Mm -hmm. So how I'm a this, firm believer of that. How does this transcend into physical health? the issues of the law of attraction and how, how our thinking. Does, uh, our, does our health, is it directly connected with our, the correct thinking? Or are there sometimes things like, i.e., do I, do I will upon me an appendicitis? Does that just come about because I had bad thinking? Or talk no, to me I about would, that. I would think that if you've got appendicitis, you've probably been, um, either your bowels have been backed up or mm -hmm. you've got something inflaming the bowels. I wouldn't just think it's just your thoughts okay, on okay. I think that's unrealistic. But I do believe that our immune system responds to our thoughts. We've got evidence of that. Mm -hmm. We know that if we have gratitude and love and we're more present, that our immune system rallies and it's able to, to repair the body and keep it in function. Mm -hmm. And if we're highly stressed and we're anxious and we've got a lot of fear and phobias and a lot of guilt and things, we run our immune system down. Mm -hmm. Even the gentleman who's recently, I was in South Africa and I got the opportunity to interact with the, the gentleman. It's the first case that they've shown that had AIDS for 22 years and then no longer has AIDS. Mm -hmm. It's the first case document. He said that he basically sat down and wrote down all the things that he'd ever done in his life that he was yeah. feeling guilty about. And he went back and thought, how did it serve people and how was he grateful for it? And he dissolved all his guilt and shame. And he believes that that's the biggest thing that changed his mm -hmm. immune system. So we know that the psychology and immune system are correlated. Right. We know that our thinking definitely impacts the way we see and act upon things. So I always say that our innermost dominant thought tends to become our outermost tangible reality. Mm -hmm. People in golf and sports have always used their thinking to get results. People in business know how to hold a vision of their vision, and they manifest, and they synchronize events. If anybody who's at the, the leadership and the leadership in the world, they know this. Mm -hmm. This is not really new. It's just it's been used. We're just putting it in packaging right. in the movie. I'd like to pick up on this right after the break. More with Dr. John Demartini right after this.